I'm Paul Grundland, and I graduated in June 1939. This was kind of the nicest period of a lifetime, in a way, junior high. We lived on Telegraph Avenue when we first moved here, and later on Dwight Way. So it was a walk to school, or later on, you bike. You bike to school. You biked everywhere. Uh, in those days, uh, I probably had uh, one set of clothes. They were on my body. Lunch uh, would eat on campus. It wasn't the health food of today. It was probably some unhealthy, white flowered snack type lunch. <laughs> but that's what kids liked, and I did too. The world was very safe then. There was no crime. We never heard of drugs. I literally had not, did not know they existed. Uh, in, in, in a lifetime, I'm 91, that was a very pleasant interlude, maybe the most pleasant three years that I can remember. So I'm grateful to Willard and have nothing but great memories of it. My name is Harold Hayashi, and I went to Willard from 1941 to half of 42. Mrs. Clark was my homeroom teacher, and uh, one person I really enjoyed was a PE teacher. His name was Schoenfeld, and he was very helpful and very kind. You know, he really helped us learn things that we didn't know before. In uh, April or May of uh, 42, the president issued an executive order ordering all Japanese Americans to relocate uh, we only had a few days to pack and get ready to move. So I went to Tan Fran for three months, and then I went to Topaz, Utah for uh, three years. I got a copy of the letter that my mother had sent to the school saying if I could be excused so I can pack. At Willard, I think the teachers were very good. They, it really helped us because you know, we were just out of elementary school and they wanted to teach us how to cope with different situations like having different classes, not just staying in one room. And I think that was the biggest help for me because if I was in elementary school and went to Topaz, I wouldn't have known anything you know, different. My name is Jane Wallace and I graduated from Willard in 1960. I remember that it was a very different world from the world of my grammar school. And I think the main way it was different was that my grammar school was very white, almost exclusively white. And when I went to Willard, it was as if I'd entered the real world at last. It felt like going to the big city or something exciting and wonderful. I liked it a lot. I had a friend named Dana Shapiro. Dana and I became friends because I ran in ninth grade for president of the student body and lost by six votes to another friend of mine, also another girl, Pam Hawken. And Dana was the equivalent of my campaign manager. And I had to laugh when I had this memory because I have no idea what the basis of my running for president was, other than wanting to be president, sort of like Trump, I suppose. We all stopped our normal classes, and they turned on TVs, which were black and white in those days, and we all watched the debate between John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon. It was a big historic event, and it felt enormously important to me, and I can still remember sitting there in my desk, listening very solemnly to these two men answer questions. And I loved that the school did that and allowed us to do that. My name is Gary Camilla, and I attended Willard in 1966 and 1967. It, it felt like a really nice introduction to the wider world of, of learning and society, really, as I say, because I'd come from this very small, rather, uh, rather narrow, uh, uh, not a good elementary school, but uh, not, not ethnically diverse and not, not, no class diversity. 
and uh, and Willard was a microcosm of Berkeley um, at that at that time. And I remember some of the uh, the classes uh, that really made an impression on me. The one that it was just <laughs> kind of legendary among anybody who was in my age group at that time, and it probably went on for many years, was a science teacher named Mr. Williams who was a very formidable, bald-headed, piercing-eyed teacher, and he was, he was really tough. If you, like, talked in his class, his refrain was, get up against the back of the wall, stand three feet away from the back of the wall, don't touch my furniture. <laughs> my furniture. I always remember that. So he was kind of scary, but you know, he was, uh, you know, we learned a lot. And I also remembered that to this day in my entire life, I'm 62 years old, I have never undertaken any task as difficult as the, the science project that he assigned to us, which was called Systems of the Human Body. I remember having a history teacher named Mrs. Ploss. She was really charismatic and really lovely and inspiring. And we learned, uh, we would read Herodotus and Thucydides and learn about the Peloponnesian Wars. I have really fond memories of that. And in fact, you know, I en ended up being an English major and then an author and a journalist. And I also read a history column. So maybe that little bit of history, you know, stuck with me in some way. I think those were really good early learning lessons. And, you know, just having those great friends and, uh, and having exposure to um, a wider slice of society. I think those were all really important and useful things for me as I went on in my life. And it was a, it was a fruitful and valuable and fun uh, time and, and a really good school. I'm Spreck Rosecrans. I graduated from Willard in 1969. I had a great math teacher, Mr. Taylor, in the seventh grade, a great history teacher in the seventh grade, Mr. Slater, in the eighth grade, a uh, metal shot, Mr. Mack was very good, and a marvelous Latin teacher, Mr. Maholland. And I still remember, have fond memories of those classes and the way those teachers brought their subject out and so forth. Uh, I remember also how many pretty girls there were in the seventh grade. And in the seventh grade, you're sort of allowed to like girls again, you know? So that was a big deal. In the sp spring of my seventh grade year, 1968, Martin Luther King was assassinated. And the school was in upheaval. And, and then in the spring of my eighth grade, they had the riots two blocks away at People's Park. And during one of those days, they chased the demonstrators south right across our campus. And our whole campus got gassed. And everybody just ran out of the classrooms and ran home. And a few kids got shot with birdshot. And so the reality of, you know, growing up in, in, in Berkeley in the late 60s was, you know, there was... There was the People's Park stuff, there was all the anti-war stuff, there was racial stuff, you know, in addition to going through puberty, and, you know, it was, it was pretty crazy. My name is Tom Spivey. Um, I'm a Willard graduate, and I graduated in 1970. I remember one day coming to school and uh, was told that there'd be no P.E., because we had P.E. classes. It was mandatory back then. You had to take cold showers and, and uh, wear gym clothes. Um, but we were told there'd be no gym because the National Guard had moved into the, uh, into the gymnasium. And so we all said, oh, wow, let's go check it out. We ran over, and sure enough, the guys with guns are shining their shoes and uh, living in our town. And I remember them saying, it was summer school, and they said, don't go by the park, because they had put up a fence around People's Park. You know, telling a, a young teenager not to go to the park, so exactly where we went. We had a field trip. We were supposed to go to San Francisco and see 1776. And instead, we went to Hare. And so we, uh, Mr. Felker got into a lot of trouble because there's nudity on stage at the end. And so he got busted. Being on this earth as long as I have, um, I would say that, you know, people need to get out there and get involved. And we were involved back then. Even though we were told to stay out of people's park, we didn't. But, you know, that was a learning experience. So without it, you know, it would, you know, I wouldn't be who I am. My name is Debbie Pryor. I attended Willard in 1974 and 1975. The thing that I remember the most about Willard was it being a period of transition, a period of time in my life where I learned independence, and it all came with this great deal of fear. Going to PE class, going to gym class, 
was my first exposure to women's athletics, organized athletics. I just didn't know what I didn't know at that time. There was this big rope that hung from the rafters in the gym and you had to climb the rope. And I don't think I ever made it to the top of that rope. But the lessons that I learned was really about doing my best, putting forth your best effort all the time and not settling for anything less. I think that the exposure and the teachers that um, I had at Willard, they were very selfless. They, they really gave of themselves. And I think that really laid a foundation for me. And it had a lot to do with why I chose to get into public service myself was the examples that they set and the, the time that they spent and, and the nurturing that they did uh, when I was at Willard. My name is Eric Johnson Sidney, and I went to Willard from 1988 to 1990. My first time coming up to Willard was actually for Purple Day, back when my mom was a teacher at Willard. She taught English and history, and she loved Prince. All of the students and all of the teachers wore purple, and they had Purple Day, and it was all because of my mom and her love for Prince and everybody's love for Prince. I remember that while I was a student at Willard, it was the beginning of really being able to be with your friends and not be chaperoned and go to the movies or just walk around Berkeley. I remember going to the school dance in the Willard cafeteria and it was like a club. It was like our first club experience. Like it was the real deal. Like it wasn't like square at all. Like I remember dancing to NWA, Easy e It was really fun and everyone cut loose and just really fun time for the whole afternoon dancing. I remember Mr. Williams, the student supervisor, he would greet the students with this handshake that was just so strong. It's like he's going to break your hand. <laughs> he would stand right there on the corner of Telegraph and Stewart and he would shake your hand and you all know, you knew what was coming because he has a very, very, very strong handshake. <laughs> yeah, I look back on Willard with good memories and I still live in Berkeley, so sometimes I pass by Willard and the building is still there and it's nice to know that students are there and they're creating lifelong friendships. My name is John Desario and I graduated Willard in 1994. Willard, I remember Especially looking back, because I'm a teacher myself now, I think about how wonderful it was to be just with seventh and eighth graders when I was in seventh and eighth grade. And I remember when I got there, how the eighth graders looked so much older. Um, and then, but it's such a quick turnaround because the very next year I was the eighth grader. And um, I remember Mr. Harula's history class and Mrs. Delp's English class. And um, Mr. Harula ran his class very much like um, David, Letter the David Letterman show. And so he, he felt like you were a guest on a show. And um, so, so he would have questions and he had a water bottle and he'd always drink it like it was vodka or something. He'd be like, Whoa. he'd be like, you know, oh, that's strong stuff. You know, it was just like, just to kind of break the, the tension of like, oh, you know, you're you're getting older and you're studying harder things and this is history and so Willard was very much my step and a lot of people's steps that they needed to continue on before high school which is you know it is a challenge and so the phoenix needed to take a step before before greatness my name is Megan Snyder and I went to Willard from 1996 to 1999 uh, well, my closest friends to this day are all from Willard. Um, I loved all of my teachers. I think I can name every single teacher at Willard. Um, being a teacher myself now, I realize how dedicated they were. So Mr. Chin was probably my favorite teacher that I ever had, and he is still there. Um, I was in his very first sixth grade class when he was a brand new teacher. My other favorite teacher was Mrs. Delp. She was my eighth grade uh, English teacher and I really liked her because she didn't put up with anything and she gave us extra credit points. Uh, they were called pretty points if you illustrated your work and I'm an artist so I really appreciated that. We had three security guards, Mr. Brantley, Mr. Williams, and Grizz 
and they were fabulous. Um, they stood on the corner every day and shook every kid's hand on the way into school. They looked every kid right in the eye and said, good morning. They made you feel safe. And when I was there, my mom called them rough and tumble children. There were a lot of rough kids there and I always felt safe because of those three people that were always on campus. When I went to Willard, there, were, there was every kind of kid there from all walks of life. And so I feel like that real exposure to being able to work with anyone, get along with anyone, be able to talk to anyone, I feel like I gained those skills at Willard. My name is Elon Friedman Grinstein, and I graduated from Willard in 2006. Willard gave me a unique opportunity to really seize my potential as like a leader, as um, someone who was not just trying to succeed in the classroom, but outside of the classroom. Field trips were great. I remember sixth grade, we went on a field trip where we went camping in Tilden. That was a great experience, and we hiked all the way up there. I think the thing that most stuck with me was a lot of the interactions I had with teachers there. So I um, was reading a case for law school the other day, and it's a case that we went over in my U.S. history class in eighth grade at Willard. And I distinctly remember it's Gideon versus Wainwright. It's your right to have counsel as an um, indigent defendant. And I distinctly remember Mr. Williams saying that the crime that Mr. Gideon was accused of was stealing Bia, wine, Coca-Cola, and Silva. Those four things specifically pronounced that way. And as I'm reading this case, it all comes back to me, and I remember that whole interaction and that whole class that we had. My name is Brandon Nito. Um, I graduated in 2010. I like cooking class. That was, that was a lot of fun, because I feel like a lot of kids now, they don't get that now in schools. I feel like they should, but cooking class, especially at that time, was fun. We cook a lot of stuff. We always, I think it would be at the end of the year, we always make some strawberry shortcakes. I think that was the only thing that they ever made that was not healthy at all. But it was fun just making it. It would just be all of us just having fun. I used to dance back then in those years. And I have started my own dance crew called the Junior Walkies. We always wore masks and it was about, first it was like three of us, then it got to like 10 of us. And then of course some of them graduated and then it just died down. But that was like my memory, like spring day in general, just the talent shows, dancing for everybody. Everybody was always looking forward to that every time spring day came around. At Willard, I feel I learned that I need to, you know, stay on top of things, be responsible for what I take ownership of. As, you know, like, cause that, I feel like middle school prepared me for high school and then that's when it really just went all out for, you know, to life, for life to really get put into play. I feel like, yeah, just be responsible. Just make sure you make the right choices as you grow up. That was just the start of it all. My name is Nicalia, and I'm graduating Willard Middle School in 2017. So my, my birthday was the first day of school. And so I kind of asked everybody, oh, when's your birthday? Because I wanted everybody to know it was my birthday. So I was like, when's your birthday? Oh, well, my birthday's today. And and then I asked, like, oh, what do you like to do? And it kind of, like, went from there. I never thought I would like English. I always, I never really enjoyed English at my elementary school. It was kind of like, oh, I have to write this persuasive essay. But now it's, like, my favorite class. I really like my teachers. In sixth grade, we went on this field trip, this camping trip, um, with Mr. Pavlock and Mr. Chin's class. And... That was most likely the funnest experience I've had at Willard. It was a really great bonding experience. I mean, you slept in a tent with somebody who was like having a sleepover with your class. The Growing Leaders program, um, I think that it's really cool because they help you like grow business. I mean, not all middle schoolers have the opportunity to start a business. And I just enjoyed working with a group of people and we all had our own job and we would all cook something together. and and it would all turn out into one thing. I would advise new students coming to Willard to stick with their group of sixth graders that they're gonna stay with because you should get to know them because they're probably going to be your friends. And appreciate it while it lasts because you're only gonna be there for three years. <laughs>